Welcome to the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Bethel Assembly, located in Oshawa, Canada. Our mandate is to spread the good news and to influence our surrounding communities. We hope your time in this place of worship, love, communion, service, and community will be a glorious and life-transforming experience. This is a place for your entire family, a place for you and me. We are a community church that deeply cares about you. All ministries were created to meet individuals' needs. In Bethel Assembly, we are a Bible-believing church charged with spreading the Word of God throughout the region of Durham. We are interested in your God-given potentials and wanted to help you to be able to fulfill your God-given destiny. We, we care about you. Welcome to your Bethel experience. This morning, very briefly, before we bring the service to an end, I just want to encourage us, still talking about glory, and what I titled, Walking in Glory. Amen. You see, it's one thing for you and I to know that we have received glory. It's another thing to what? To walk the walk of glory. Praise God. It's another thing to do what? To walk the walk of glory. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Let's read the scripture together. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. We've been looking at that scripture for quite some time now. It says, But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the lord may the lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word in jesus name Amen. beloved we've talked quite extensively about glory this month and i remember Emphasizing to us that every child of God, we have a promise from God. And it is the promise of what? Of glory. Correct? But do you know a promise We always remain a promise until its fulfillment? Praise God. How many of us remember at the beginning of this year that you studied the word of God and you received a promise from God? Or God gave you a revelation or God gave you an insight. You have received a particular promise from God from the beginning of the year. Amen. I'm sure every one of us has one promise or the other. But I'm here to tell you that a promise in life we always remain a promise until its fulfillment. I'm sure some of us will also remember you have uncles and aunties people that you look up to and they will give you a promise that if you study if you go to school when you finish i will set you up i will hook you i have a network praise god how many of us also remember that those promises are empty promises because when it is time for fulfillment it's either that uncle or that auntie is no more in that position of authority but I'm here to let you know that the promise that you have received from God has the backing of the King of Kings. Has the backing of the King of Glory. And God is the only one that can promise and we always bring it to pass. I also want us to know that when there is a promise, there will always be battles. There will always be contention from the enemy in order to hinder the fulfillment of that promise. We all remembered the devil and all his agents, they tried to stop Jesus. They tried all that they could. Bible says in Revelation there was war in heaven. And the devil and all his angels fought in order to stop the seed of the woman. But he failed. 
on your behalf and on my behalf, God gave mankind victory. And so we don't only have that promise. We can hold on to the word of God because that promise has been fulfilled. In who? In Christ Jesus. And so how many of us are children of God? How many of us have accepted Jesus as your Lord and your Savior? For each and every one of us who have received that promise, in Christ Jesus, that promise has been fulfilled. And so glory that God has ordained for you has already been released upon you. We talked about it in Isaiah chapter 60. It says, Arise, shine, for your light is come. And what? And the glory has been what? Has been released. That glory is already released. Is already risen upon you. And so when we are talking about glory. It is not something that you need to continue to look forward to. It is something that is already on you. Praise God. And that's why today. I want to emphasize to each and every one of us the need to begin to walk in the consciousness of that glory that you and I, we have received not just the promise of glory, but the fullness of the glory of Christ. And so you need to begin to walk the walk. Praise God. Praise God. When you look through the scripture, there are a couple of men of God starting from you know, uh, Genesis chapter 5, the man called Enoch. Genesis chapter 5 from verse 20, 21, 22. The Bible talks about Enoch. Amen. When Enoch started to walk with God, from verse 21. Now, when Enoch started to walk with God, he lived for 65 years. And what he was doing for that 65 years we did not know. But the Bible says in verse 22, after 65 years, he walked with God. He gave back to Methuselah and they walked with God for 300 years. Amen. How many years? 300 years. The walk of glory. Brethren, when we look at life, a life of glory is what God has called each and every one of us to live. You see, remember in Genesis chapter 1 verse 20, we were created in the image and the likeness of God. Hallelujah. And so, the life that you and I have been created to live, ordained to live, and destined to live, is a life of glory. And when we're talking about a life of glory, if you are not walking with God, you cannot walk in glory. Praise God. Because he is the king of glory. And so you want to walk in glory, you must walk with God. And that was what Enoch did. The Bible says Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah. 300 years and he begat sons and daughters. Verse 23. He walked with God. And the Bible says all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Amen. And look at verse 24. For 300 years he walked with God. And Enoch walked with God and he was not. He was not found. God took him. He walk with God, he walk in glory, and they walk to glory. Amen. Amen. Do we understand that? When we're talking about the walk of glory, we're not talking of a walk that we can understand by human understanding. When you are walking with God, your focus is on God, your attention. It's on God, not on circumstances and situations around you. Not on issues, not on labels that people may tag you with. When you are working with God, your focus is on who? Is on God. Praise the Lord. And that's where I want to start. You want to understand the principle of working? 
in glory. And the first thing, still talking about Enoch, is you need to develop that relationship with God. If you don't have that relationship, you will not be able to walk what I would refer to as the walk of glory. It is not the walk of boasting. It is the walk of glory. When you develop a relationship with God, when you prioritize your relationship with God, uh, Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Can two walk together? Except there is what? There is an agreement. I know some of our uh, young ones will relate with this. They have some friends and they call themselves BFF. Amen. Is that correct? They are best friends forever. <laughs> Praise God. I'm here to tell you, let Jesus be your own BFF. Let him be your best friend forever. Because without him, you cannot walk in glory. Without Jesus, you cannot walk the walk of glory. And when we're talking about, you know, having a relationship with Jesus, when you prioritize that relationship, there are a lot of components to it. I'm not talking about that today. Your relationship entails your worship of God. The time that you set aside to pray. The time that you set aside to study the word of God. When you have a friend that you enjoy the company of that friend. Sometimes you'll be on the phone till late in the night and you will not know. Amen. Amen. How many of us stay like that in the presence of God? Hallelujah. But what we are saying is this. In the world that we are living. Every individual that you see out there must be in relationship. And so, if you are not in relationship with Christ, then you are in relationship with someone else. But for you and I to walk in glory, and you want to enjoy the glory that is from the Lord, then I want to encourage you that you must walk on your relationship with Christ. Whatever you need to do in order to improve that relationship, in order to increase that relationship, you must do so. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Number two, let me also say this. Principles of walking in glory. Number one, I say you must have a relationship. Develop that fellowship, that intimate relationship with only Jesus. Number two, you must walk in holiness. God that we serve is a holy God. In Genesis chapter, let's start from chapter 6 and verse 8. Talking about Noah. Genesis chapter 6, verse 8 and verse 9. The man Noah. Amen. The Bible says he found grace in the sight of the Lord. Look at verse 9. And these are the generation of Noah. Noah was a just man. What does it mean to be a just person? Perfect in his generation. And he did what with God? He walked with God. We're in a generation where we don't even know. We cannot identify Christians anymore. Because the world has become churchy. And the church has become worldly. We can't distinguish, we cannot identify between the church and the world. But for you as a child of God, you want to walk in glory. You must walk in holiness. The standard of God is still the same. It's not going to be lowered for anyone. Whether you are in North America or Europe or Asia... Your location does not change the fact that God is not going to lower his standard for any of us. Are we together, church? A walk of holiness is important. Praise God. In that same Genesis, look at chapter 7, verse 1. Genesis chapter 7, verse 1. 
And the Lord said unto Noah, after this man has to walk with him, he says, come you and all your house into the ark. He said, for only you have I seen righteous before me in this generation. We are talking of a whole generation and God can only find one man. What will be said of you? What will be said of me in our own generation? Is God going to find you faithful? Is he going to find you righteous? He says, only you have I found faithful in this generation. And what was he doing? The Bible says he walked with God. But he was walking in righteousness. Sin. The Bible says all have sinned. And have come short of the glory of God. It is only sin that can remove glory from the life of a man. But when you don't allow sin in your life and you are walking in holiness, there is no way the glory of God will not be seen upon you. Praise the Lord. The month of glory. We've had a lot about glory. But I don't want it to end there. I want you consciously to begin to walk the walk of glory. I want you to have the mindset that there is a God in heaven that sees me and he knows me. Uh, there is a man in the scripture, Isaac. Praise God. God asked him to do something. And I remember his story very well in uh, Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26 from verse 1. Amen. Genesis chapter 26 from verse 1. And the Bible said there was famine in the land. And Isaac went to Abimelech, the king of the Philistines, unto Gera. Amen. And the Lord appeared to him and said, Go not down into Egypt and dwell in the land that I shall tell thee of. The point I want to make here is this, and that will lead me to the third point. You want to walk in glory, you must walk in obedience. You see, most of us, we have our plans, we have our agenda. And when we come to God in prayer, we have that bucket list. And we're saying, God, this is what I want you to just ratify. Not God, what is your will? And so God told us, don't leave this land, stay here. Don't go down to Egypt. Egypt represents sin, ungodliness, uncleanliness. He says, don't go down. Stay in this land and I am going to bless you. Amen. Isaac obeyed. And if you go down to verse 12. You see, the Bible says in that land there was famine. And everybody was living. But God says, I want you to walk with me in obedience. And he, he obeyed God. He stayed. And when he stayed in the land, now, the work of glory is not the work of laziness. Now, most of us assume that because we have the promise from God, we can now sit back and cross our leg and do nothing. No, this man, the Bible says he sold. He found that everybody left because there was famine. And God says, stay. He decided to plant. And the Bible says, he sow. And in that land, he reap in the same year. How many fold? Hundred fold. And the Bible says, the Lord blessed him. In the same land where there was famine. Just because he decided to obey. Look at verse 13. God did not just bless him. The Bible says in verse 13, the man works great as a result of the blessings of God in his life. 
As a result of the glory of God, he went forward. He grew until he became very great. Glory of God. When it comes upon the life of a man, that glory will multiply the work of your hand. Remember, I said that glory will do what? Will multiply the work of your hand. Isaac sow in the land. Look at verse 14. In the same year, he reaped an hundredfold. He became great. He had possessions of flocks, of art, great stores of servants. And the people of the land, the Philistines, that left because of famine, what happened? They decided to now envy them. You see, whether you make it in life or you did not, people will still envy you. If you don't have enough, some people would mock you and say, well, yeah, they've been in Canada. What exactly are they doing? We can't see the difference. And if you have too much, some people will still what? They will still talk about you that, oh, we don't even know. They are not helping other people. And so I would rather be blessed of God. Amen. I would rather allow the glory of God to fuel my life. The work of glory. It is the work of obedience. Uh, Job chapter 36, verse 11. Job 36, verse 11. It says, if you obey, amen, and serve me. You obey and serve him. It says, you will spend your days in what? In prosperity and your years. Not year, your years. That means all the days of your life. Going back to our test, every one of us with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. As we continue to look into the image of Christ, he says, All the days of your life will be what? In pleasure, not struggle. Amen. Not struggle. It will be in pleasure. So tell your neighbor, you must make up your mind to walk with God. To walk with God in obedience. In obedience. In obedience. Because obedience will take you to your place of rest. Amen. You see, when everybody was leaving... Isaac also had a reason to say, God, well, there is famine. Let me also what? Let me leave. We're talking of obedience to the work of God. Obedience to the word of God. Praise God. It is when you obey that God on your behalf will make things happen. Because his word, remember, we talk about the promise of glory. When God gave that promise to Abraham, I'm going to bless you and bless your seed and make your descendant great. Abraham was blessed. Isaac was very blessed. But Jacob, his children, Israel, was exceeding blessed. Do we see the progression of glory? And that's why I want to encourage someone today. I don't want you to just continue to be the hearer of this word. I want you to take step. Because that promise is for each and every one of us. And the glory must manifest. It is the result that will prove to others that God is in your life. Praise God. Amen. And number four, as I round up, you want to walk in glory, you must walk in faith. Amen. You must do what? You must walk in faith. But without faith, it is what? It is impossible to please God. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Without faith, you cannot what? You cannot walk with God. You cannot please God. Can you imagine when God was asking uh, Noah 
to go and build an ark. It takes great faith. And so we're talking about him today. But when the man was building the ark, there was no rain. There was no cloud. And people were looking at him and they were mocking him. And people were looking at him and saying, maybe something is wrong with him. When you are walking with God in faith, every instruction, every you know, direction from God may not make sense sometimes. Let me tell you this. Don't try to figure out the great God based on your own understanding. Praise God. Because even Isaac, when he was sowing in farming, go and ask every farmer, when there is farming, it is, is, is that the right time to sow? No. Why? Because the seed will die. But when God says, no, this is the right time that I want you to sow, it's because God wants to intervene. Faith will take something from you. And we've seen examples of people who walk with God. And sometimes we assume that it's because they are people in the scriptures. Do you know that they are also flesh and blood like you and I? Elijah was a man of like passion as we are. The Bible says he prayed. And he says there will not be rain or dew. And there was no rain. And we thought that that was the end. No. The man had already prayed in the secret. And so he could come out openly to come and declare the word of God that there will be no rain. And so, church, as I conclude this morning, glory is what you and I have been created and ordained to reflect to manifest, to display. And so our life must be an example of the glory of the Lord. It says, arise. Do what? Shine. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord is already upon you. And so how can somebody walk in glory if they refuse to arise? Praise God. Let me give us an example. Someone who wants to walk in glory in their career and rather than to go and improve themselves they choose they decide that you know what when everybody is studying for their professional certification i'm not going to do anything why because god has given a promise he's going to promote me he's going to bless me and they did not do anything and when it's time for promotion they don't have anything to show is that God's fault? That's why the Bible is saying, arise. Shine. For your light has come. It is not going to be by your effort. It is God that will bless the little. And look at Isaac. When he was sowing. Amen. When he was sowing. Do you think it was easy for him? No. And that's why I want to encourage every one of us, church, today. It's time for us to arise and don't assume that this country will give you that which belongs to you. Even if they give it to you, it is not, it's a privilege. Amen. But it is the blessings of God that will take you to the top. I said it is the blessings of God that will take you to the top. Why? Because there are people that you met in this land. And there are still others that will keep coming in. And each and every one of us has a journey. But when God lifts up a man, he's the only one that can do that. He lifted up the head of Joseph. He slept as a prisoner. And woke up in the morning as a prisoner. And he was called before the presence of Pharaoh. Because he was a carrier of the glory of God. And by the time that glory manifested, Pharaoh looked at him and he says, You are the man. There is no other person in this land that can do this that you have said. So I'm going to promote you. 
Amen. Amen. And he became the prime minister. But not because he was lazy. When Joseph was interpreting dreams, he did not know what God was working out. And so church this morning as I round up, God wants you and I to live a glory life. He wants you to walk in obedience to his word. He wants you to walk in holiness and righteousness. Others can tell you that this is how they do things in Canada. It's a civilized world. But we serve a God whose ways are unsearchable. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. When you align yourself with him, you will live a life of glory effortlessly. Let's rise up. And I want you to take a word of prayer. We remember our Lord Jesus Christ. Even when he came into this world as the son of man, still being the son of God, he humbled himself. He paid the price for the salvation of mankind. And at the end, he was translated to glory. The Bible says the heavens open up. And right before all the disciples, he was taken up to glory. Because he paid the price. There is the promise of glory. But I want you not to just stay on the promise. But you need to walk with God in order to be able to live and enjoy that glory. I don't want you... You see, God is going to bless each and every one of us with long life. Amen. I said, God will bless you with long life. Amen. But I don't want you to wait until when you are 80 before God will bless you financially. Do you know why? Because how many days after 80 years? God wants you... He says, if you will obey and serve me, you will spend your days... In what? In prosperity. in prosperity. And your years. That means from the days of your youth until, you know, you continue to grow and grow. He wants you to spend your years in pleasure. Not to manage. Not to struggle. You see, the life of glory. When we're talking about glory, everything about God is encompassing glory. Provision is part of glory. Healing is part of it. You will live in perfect health. Even if there are diseases and infirmities, diagnosed or not diagnosed, we have the promise of God. He who lives in us is greater than he who is in the world. The one who has assured us that none of the diseases of Egypt would be laid upon us. And when you walk in glory, it does not matter what medical report you are looking at. You, you see, when Abraham believed God that he is going to take his son, he knows that God can bring him up again. And so, when we talk about the work of faith, it is not just something that you talk about. It is something that I want you to live because that is where the result is. Praise the Lord. And so I want you to take a word of prayer. You're going to ask for grace to walk with God. I want to walk with you all the days of my life because I know you are the only one that can help my destiny in life. The work of glory is the work of holiness. It's the work of obedience to the word of God. It is the work of faith. Enoch walked with God for 300 good years and it was translated to glory. He did not pass through the portals of grave. Are you working with God or you are still working with men? You are working with friends. God wants you to live a life of glory, not a life of sickness, not a life of managing, not a life of struggle, not a life of near success. He says you will be the edge and not the tail. You will be on top and never beneath. 
But I also want to say this. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus, you cannot walk in glory. And so if you have not given your life to Jesus, I want to encourage you. Now is the time for you to say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Come in today and save my soul. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Father, I just want to thank you this afternoon. Thank you for your word that you have sent to us today. Lord, I'm asking for each and every of my era that you will grant us the grace, Lord, to begin to walk with you. Amen. The grace to abide in faith. The grace to abide in holiness. The grace, O oh God, Father, Lord, to stay in relationship with you. Grant unto us in the name of Jesus. Amen. In this crooked and perverse generation, we resist trends not to lose focus. Not to go back, not to fall, not to falter in the name of Jesus. And as we continue to work with you daily in fellowship, as we work with you in obedience, as we work with you in faith, you will continue to move us daily from glory and to glory and to glory and to glory. In every area of our life, we will experience glory. In every facet of our life, we will experience glory. In our career, Lord, we will experience glory. In our finances, we will experience glory. In our family life, we will experience glory. In the life of our children, we will experience glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' name, we are praying. And amen. Thank you for joining us today. We hope your Bethel experience was blessed. Join us next time here in the sanctuary. You can drive in, carpool, or reach out to our transportation team for assistance. Our services hold every Sunday at 10 a.m. Stay connected via our social media platforms and visit our website at www.rccgbethelassembly.org. See you next time.